Welcome back to Business Here on Business Week here on Horizon News. In our review today of Niger's economy, we take a specific look at global markets, recent policy developments, and how investors, both domestic and foreign, view Niger's investment and business environment. In our review, I'm joined by Namdi Wizu, co-managing partner and head of trading at Commercio Partners Limited, as well as Ugo Dre Obichuku, founder and CEO of Naira Metrics. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Great to have you on. Here. Yeah, so the, the first question, I want to start with what's happening around the world, because we can obviously remove ourselves from that reality. Um, so what would you say are some of the big trends now? And I start with you, Namdi, driving uh, global macroeconomic events, and, and what should we be looking out for? Well, I think um, right now the major thing seems to be what the Fed is going to do. Okay. Um, I mean, you see um, data come, come out from the U.S., Bid, PCE, CPI, whatever it is, and you see the global markets, you know, tend to react to that. Um, I think going to a point where bad news is good news because for them, the um, poorer or the more the economy struggles in the U.S., the more likely it is that the Fed will cut rates, okay. which would more or less mean a weaker dollar and more or less help boost other economies, right? So what we've seen is people keep on looking out for data and trying to read the data and say, look, which way the data point? Does it point to a slowing U.S. economy, mm -hmm. which means the Fed will have to act and cut rates? And we know that the U.S. does control, you know, mm -hmm. the global economy more or less. So that then also look at what's happening in China. You know, we've had China reduce rates recently, the, um, the bank's lending rates, yeah. which people seem to point to signaling uh, Possibly a weaker economy because I mean that's the reason why you see them, you know, um, reducing rates at this point in time. So a bit of a worry mm -hmm. also is China beginning to struggle. They've also seen reduction in demand for um, petroleum products coming out of China. So that means that it's possible that their own manufacturing is also slowing down. So between the U.S. and the China, mm -hmm. those two economies are things to really watch out yeah, for. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, China seems to really try and stimulate a struggling economy. But does the U.S. elections add to that dynamic? Because now we're even in a phase where in other markets around the world, you know, African sovereigns are trying to issue bonds, Nigerian banks are raising capital. Is all of that a distraction? Should we be worried, uh, Ugo, Dre? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I think that, um, I mean, these are cycles that we've all come to uh, get accustomed to. Uh, in the U.S., I guess for me, what caught my attention during the week was this talk around having having a, a weakened dollar. Yeah, Trump, I think Trump. This rhetoric to, yeah, around weakening yeah, to boost uh, trade and exactly. exports. Exactly. So yeah. I kind of looked at it. I'm like, okay, okay, that's new. But you that will never happen. Will it? You never know. It might probably difficult to happen, but you know, you never know with these guys, right? So, but that's new, in, in, at least when it comes to uh, you know things like this. And you wonder, okay, so how does that impact? impact us anyway. Does that mean, you know, exports become more, less competitive, mm -hmm. or does it mean imports from the U.S. becomes cheaper, or how, how does that affect China? So that's probably a new dynamic. But, you know, from an African perspective, I think uh, the, the pertinent issues would always be interest rates okay. and, and how quickly maybe the Fed gets to cut them and so, such that it impacts us positively. And I guess that's in terms of, you know, FPIs. Mm. Uh, nevertheless, we're still seeing FPIs coming. I mean, if you listen to what the central bank governor said at the last uh, MPC meeting, it uh, looks like, you know, the high interest rate that we're having is giving us some kind of edge, uh, despite, of course, the consequences on the economy. Uh, so, yeah, still a challenge globally what is happening. Uh, still geopolitical issues uh, that would still wear his head in here and there. But... Ultimately, I think capital will always flow to where, you know, there is an uh, appetite for Absolutely. where there's good interest. And where there are returns. Yeah, yeah where there are returns. So, um, Namdi, looking at, you know, sub-Saharan Africa, you know, I was recently on a roadshow where many investors were kind of talking, uh, they're not interested, you know, Nigeria has like gone off the index, they're not even looking at it, they're, they're looking yeah. at markets like Argentina, like Turkey. So how are portfolio managers and fund managers now thinking about Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa primarily, and Nigeria in terms of how they allocate capital. What are some of the issues they're saying or, or they're raising as concerns or things that they're watching very closely? Uh, uh, good question. I mean, first of all, it's difficult to look at Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa without Nigeria. So if you're a foreign portfolio investor and you're saying, I want to invest in Africa, mm -hmm. there are certain countries that typically you would tick Nigeria, definitely one of them. So Nigeria, Egypt, um, South Africa, those are the kind of countries that typically people mm. would take off, right? We know that, um, I mean, Nigeria, we've seen 
depreciation of the currency has been pretty aggressive right over the last uh, one year mm. and naturally that's playing on the minds of investors so um scenarios i mean we've seen people like so for instance seeing guinness exit and what was the value of the do uh, dollar they were taking out i think about seven seven million or something like that some little figure say to yourself how much was it when they came in? Right? Yeah, yeah, Maybe indeed. at the hundred and something, mm. convert what it was in dollars, and how many years later are going to have taken out only seven, seven million. Yeah. So for them, they are looking at exchange rate. And for me, I always say exchange rate is not necessarily about how strong it is. I mean, we had, uh, we will talk about the US talking about, uh, Trump talking about uh, weakening the dollar, right? But it's more about stability yeah, of the absolutely. currency, right? Um, being able to measure where you think currency will be in two, three years, and that helps you calculate what your and returns plan. are being when you're coming in. Yeah. So you're looking at that. Uh, also looking at insecurity, because Nigeria as a whole, the investable areas are shrinking, right? Yeah. So is, is that even a concern, but for portfolio investors? Yeah, you but it is. It, okay. it is. Because, so um, if you're coming and you're investing in, let's assume you invest in an agri, agri firm that's True. Um, that is in the north, right? And suddenly you have insecurity and mm -hmm. they have to shut down and come out. Then what happens? Or you're mm -hmm. coming to invest in the mines yeah. and you now have unrest over there, right? Or even assuming, imagine this protest they've been talking about, imagine it, it does take off and turns violence like enters, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of people worry. People are going to pack their things and start to jet out of the country, right? Yeah. So insecurity definitely is always a big um, yeah, big consideration. Mm. Even tourism, you can't have tourism without security. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Nobody wants to come in and you know get kidnapped, yeah. right? Yeah. So for investors coming to the country, they need to ensure they have mobile police and all sorts of things that's cutting them everywhere in Lagos. And you know, bad news travels fast. So absolutely. that is a big consideration. Um, then also what's happening on the fiscal side, we've seen the monetary policy continue to um, you know, do their own bit, but for investors, when you say coming to Nigeria, what are you investing in? So if it's the FPI is what they're fine, you know, high interest rates, so they're coming in, they're enjoying the, you know, carry trade and all. But if it's the FDI, is what are you investing in? Absolutely. You see people who have invested struggle, you're seeing maybe the story going around about Dangote, bad optics for the country, you know, and they're saying to yourself, okay, they tell us coming to the country. What are we going to invest mm -hmm. in? Which areas, right? We have a population. But well, we need to have other things yeah, sure. all come together to make things, you know, yeah. work in sync. And you know, I think your first point around mm. the the predictability yeah. of economic policy direction is key, because when you talk to a lot of investors and you say, "Come to Nigeria, come to Nigeria," they're like, oh, "Look at Turkey, look at Egypt." But I say those countries have had devaluation on their currencies as well, the Egyptian pound, the Turkish as yeah. well, um, the lira. So I'm I'm wondering, from if you assess the policy trajectory of the government since 2023 to now. Would you give it a pass mark? I know that's a very direct question. I know it's probably not black and white. You know, nobody's expecting an overnight miracle. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of setting the right tone and the right signals, how would you assess what investors, you know, how would you even get into their minds to say, this is the assessment of how the government has done? Well, I think, I think for investors there, and even for those of us that are here who also invest locally, there are just a number of things that, that, that you tend to want to look at. Uh, firstly, what is even the, the benchmark that the government has given itself, or sort of like the, 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 the scorecard, like how do they want to be rated? I don't know what our inflation target is. I don't know if you know, never know what our inflation target is, because the inflation target that we had at, for the MTF is obviously not the right inflation target. We also don't know what the sense is in terms of where they think the exchange rate should be, uh, and then if you now look at the benchmark that they already set, for example, crude oil, crude oil Prices. output, we're nowhere yeah. close to where it should be. Mm. So I think for investors, they, they can discern clearly and they can see these things and say, okay, look, uh, we see what you're trying to do with the exchange rate, and that's fine. We also see that your inflation is off the charts. Um, but however, what are you doing to combat inflation? We've seen a lot of work on the monetary policy side, mm -hmm. but on the fiscal side, it's, is it enough? Uh, you're still not anywhere close to your crude oil output level, which I still feel is one of the most important benchmarks that you can ever have because yes. that's what global people look. They mm -hmm. look at your output and how you're able to, of course, increase your reserves. And of course, they look at your reserves levels too. And we all know that, yes, we are at 36, 37 billion dollars, but essentially due to uh, FPIs, which is their own money anyway. So they all look at all these things. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, internally, what 
how are Nigerians feeling? What is the purchasing power of Nigerians? The purchasing power of Nigerians have been decimated over the last one year. And so that also affects demand, aggregate demand, and the ability to consume. And so that is why it's increasingly difficult for mm. foreign players to come into this country to set up or to do business. Because when you look at Turkey, you look at Egypt, you look at South Africa, and you look at purchasing power levels, it's nowhere close. We're just nowhere close. We just did minimum wage at 70K. This is still less than a dollar or there about a day. So yeah. it's pretty difficult for them. And when you look at the landscape, and okay, we've seen a lot of reforms, uh, kind of makes sense, but it's slow. And then you also now ask, okay, what about government itself? What's the body language we're seeing? Uh, are there any efforts on the physical side to, as much as possible, curb try and excesses. curb excesses? Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen physical side come on the table now, and come on the table with increased taxes. Okay, that is also a hand we because like, okay, where is this going to? Now yeah. you're taxing banks, and now you, who else is you know mm. going to be on the chopping block? Because it's obvious that some of this big spending that you're also seeing on the other side has to be paid for by some kind of, you know, either yeah. taxes or, or, or cotton so, revenue. So, so listen to what you say, there's, there's a whole heap of issues, but there's no single sil silver bullet. None. None. So now... There might be. There but, might be, and, yeah. and maybe I'll, oil, I'll, I'll take up. you both. Well, crude oil. Has oil, to go oil. And I think even the average Nigerian knows that if we can get some stability in production, million, we'll yeah. be well on our way. But looking at the options the government has, right, in terms of the budget, the deficit, the funding gap, and the funding requirement, and the focus on private sector fiscals and the tax, mm -hmm. let's take the banks. The government wants to increase the economy by GDP, $1 trillion economy, right? The banks are key to that because yeah. banks give out credit to the private sector, to SMEs. Um, this fiscal uh, tax, uh, the, fisc the tax amendment bill, with, which has gone up from 50 to 70%, 70%. Yeah. what is your reading of how investors are looking at this? Do you think this was the right thing to do? You know, I, I, I want to hear someone's opinion specifically on this. And does the government have other options? That's the question. Well, so whoever wants to have a good let, let me let me take a shot first. Um, so you know, I, I was I, I I've taken some time to read through it over the week, and it just all kind of makes sense all of a sudden. And I'm like, okay, oh really? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, <laughs> we were meant to. So so banks made a lot of profit last yeah. year and into the first quarter of this year, and then a certain bank comes comes and says, oh, you know what? We're gonna raise your capital, mm. but you're not going to tap into your return earnings because that's not going to be that capital. So like this was and the plan all like, along. Yeah, so it kind of looks like, okay, so because if you're going to pay these tax, it's got to come out of your return earnings anyway. So, okay, so finally banks now have what to do with their return earnings. So it kind of looks like that's what they've always planned from time. And okay. so that's why they're not telling banks to recapitalize, which is also a way of mopping out money from, 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 from the public. But all the same, I think that Government thinks they probably can get a trillion out of this mm -hmm. or thereabouts because I think a trillion total, yeah, yeah, I think or slightly less mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking at realized profit of banks, which we're not really sure what it is. Um, but I don't think that it goes far, far enough. Um, yes. Oh, in when you no, say it doesn't in, go in far enough, of, you want to raise the tax the government actually, no, 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 no. I don't even support it at all. In terms of how much, what they really need. What they need yeah, what they really, to yeah, fund what, the yeah, additional what budget. What they really need yeah. is not more taxes. I think we've always said it's basically about trying to expand that tax net. Okay, right? sure. That's the real work. Sure. Um, because at the end of the day, this is about, I think I read a report that said it was 0.3% or so of GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, tax revenue is about 9% of GDP. So still nowhere, you know, close to really moving the needle. Mm. So probably a temporary measure, but I think it's essentially sure. kicking the can. Sure, Nandi, I'd like to hear your view. And then on top of that, you know, talk about, you know, various measures. The government is doing several things at the same time. The latest announcement has been the $500 million yeah. diaspora bond, dollar denominated diaspora bond. So yeah. in your response, I'd like you to also put that into the bucket and yeah. analyze I mean, it for us. So first of all, the challenge I have with taxing the banks would be, you've said to the banks, go and raise capital. And then at the same time, oh, by the way, we're going to take 70% of your FX profit from 2023 to 2025. At the same time, they're going to go and raise capital. They're talking to investors and they're saying, well, we're really going to be difficult to project how much we're going to make because what I make from FX, 70% of it is going to be taxed. Yeah. So a big chunk of their um, fantastic results last year came from FX. So a big chunk of that goes. If you talk to a lot of people who work in bank treasures and co, most of them making, they have made money this year has been from FX. So you're saying to yourself, okay, 70% of that is going to go. And then how far does it go in terms of foreign currency earnings? 
does that include letters of LLCs and all sorts of things, or is it just the monies you've made from the you know currency mm -hmm. moving on your position? So it's it can be far reaching. It depends on how far they decide to stretch their interpretation. You've had people who've done swaps with central bank. Are you going to go and tax their earnings on that too? And that also has formed a big chunk sure. of you know, so earnings the, for the, the bank. The tax so, advisors still need to assess what really this means. Well, and I think a lot of banks well, are still I mean, You know how it is with government. They release stuff then it depends on the interpretation of the person. Yeah. By the time they come, they check, oh, we don't have Which enough Which potentially yet. creates Let's, more uncertainty. For, but, and but, they're they are trying to raise capital at the same time. Yeah, sure. I You're mean, right? you're moving away from that even. Yeah. Look yeah. at all the other measures. And I talk about this 500 million diaspora yes. bond. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the rationale behind yeah. that and what impact it will really have. So I, I think the way they've looked at it is you have a lot of Nigerians who have large deposits with the banks, dollar deposits, right? Over the last few years, you know, a lot of people have been scrambling to, you know, mm -hmm. build their own personal dollar holdings. They look at, they've looked at what the dumb balance accounts, dumb balances are for the banks and seen the large figure. And they said, look, why don't we tap into this? Even though the banks have, have already tapped into it, because typically a lot of the dollar loans that corporates get would come from the deposits that the banks have, dollar deposits. So they're trying to tap into it. They believe they can get um, cheaper rates for it, ideally, because when Ghana did theirs, Ghana um, mm. issued their own uh, dollar domesticated uh, dollar bond. They were able to get a cheaper rate than euro bonds, right, that they issued. So they said, let's tap into this market. However, it's for me, it's a bit tricky because if I were to invest, I would want a higher rate than euro bonds. Absolutely. For two reasons. One is liquidity, because when you don't have the foreign investors playing, liquidity is much less. Mm -hmm. Second would be, if you look at the way Ghana restructured their domestic dollar bond, it was so easy. You know, just mm -hmm. call the bank, say, look, we're going to do X, Y, Z. We're restructuring this way. Unlike euro bond holders that had international players, mm -hmm. but they had to fight and push for it and push for better terms before they finally agreed. Mm -hmm. So people would be a bit worried. However, um, we had expected $3 billion mm. dollars domestic, uh, dollar domestic borrowing. So we assume that 500 is to test the waters, see, see what the reception works, will yeah. be, see how it works. Yeah. If, they get, if they do get $3 billion, that takes you to almost, what, $5 trillion or thereabout, mm. which helps them with the yeah. um, 6.2 trillion. You know, with, with all this, part of my concern is yeah. the, the government's total debt obligations, because it, in all of this, it, it keeps climbing. Yes, so the does. part about actually growing our revenue base and oil is, is going to be quite key to this. But I, I want to ask you about inflation. And with all of this said, the investment decisions Nigerians are making, uh, investors are making, what do I invest in? What don't I invest in? How is inflation really impacting that outlook? Yeah. Namdi, I'll start with you. Uh, it's, it's been huge. Equities market struggling mm -hmm. because people are saying to themselves, if I can get a yield of 28, 29% in equities, right? Uh, sorry, in um, treasury bills. Why am I going to my equities? If I can buy a 10 year bond at 22% or 21%, Right. Why should I go and buy equities, for instance? Yeah, but even right? that 22% is still below inflation. Yes, it is. But I mean, <laughs> so well, the way it works with inflation is it's below inflation today, but mm. you're saying to yourself, what is inflation going to be? Yeah, yes, over 10 sure. years. Yeah. We don't expect it to be, right? Mm. So um, we've seen a lot of people shift more to government securities mm. and they're reluctant to go into other sectors. However, this is also driving inflation, you know, because you now have corporates coming to borrow at 30%, 32%, 35% from the market, and they need to transfer that cost to consumers. To consumers. Mm -hmm. So once again, you have the cost push inflation you know, seeping in again because higher rates, they need to transfer that cost, right? Mm -hmm. So we've seen from perspective of corporates who are trying to borrow, right, um, people are beginning to struggle a bit because they need to look at you know, their own internal dynamics. And in terms of the investors, people keep comparing, look, I have risk-free at this rate, and then you're saying, come and you know, invest in this business venture or come and mm. do this. What should I be putting my money into? However, if you look at it from a dollar perspective, it's supposed to help work because you say to yourself, do I think the dollar would depreciate by 30% over the next one year? Mm. If not, let me put my money in the government securities or you know local credit versus going to buy yeah, university. Absolutely. So that is also a big consideration for mm. people and hopefully that might help stem the continued depreciation of currency, currency to an extent, mm. right? Yeah, so having said all this, we said a lot. I, I want to talk about the positives. <laughs> for those who are yeah. still 
betting on Nigeria, who are still in Nigeria, who are still bringing in new money into Nigeria. Um, what is the attraction? What is it about this market? And, you know, we always hear demographics, large consumer markets, but surely it must be beyond that. So we have just about two minutes left. I wanted you to just help us. Yeah. Okay, I think I think short term, uh, like I like I, you would typically say, this there's never been a better time to invest in in Nigerian securities, uh, whether it's fixed income securities or equities. I think that a lot of them, this is the cheapest mm. uh, I've seen them in years, and this is a market that I've been tracking for years. Yeah. So in the short term, yes, it makes sense to invest now if you're looking at the future. Never a better time to invest in Nigeria now. Um, but in terms of you know long term and what people see in Nigeria, I kind of think it's just resilience. It's just been a very resilient economy, despite everything that's been thrown mm. thrown at us. It's a pretty mm. resilient economy, and then it's also a very young economy, vibrant economy, vib young people rather, economy full of young people who are very hardworking and vibrant. So, I think ultimately these are people who would always consume. So it's a consumer country, yeah. and so long as you can get you know, purchasing power slightly to a level where they can consume is always going to be a very attractive market, especially mm -hmm. in Sub-Saharan Africa. And at the end of the day, when you're looking at the world map and you're saying, okay, you want to come to Sub-Saharan Africa, where do you want to go to? It's always going to be nice. Nigeria is always going to be in that conversation. So mm -hmm. for that reason, I think that, you know, there's always going to be some kind of positive bet on Nigeria. And mm -hmm. people always know that when you invest here, uh, whereas, it's, you know, hot money, like they call it, the yields are usually very sweet and attractive. <laughs> yeah, so, clearly. And if you also wanted to make good here. money, oh, we're still here now. We're still <laughs> Namdi, here. what about you? Just one thought, very briefly. Uh, yeah. I just say it's a return. So high risk, high reward. So people coming in mm -hmm. believe they're going to make a killing. Uh, truth about it, you don't have to beg people to come if they're not going to make money. Yeah. Right? Once they see, people smell the money. And if they say that there's money there, they're going to go. So as long as people believe that they can get promising returns, Right, they would continue to come, and I think Nigeria just needs one or two little tweaks, mm. and you know you have the economy turn. Okay, so again. if yeah. they can, so we talked about crude oil production going up, for instance, right? Power generation getting better, and then security, for Fantastic. instance. If we can solve those three things, you increase production in Nigeria, which would help dollars even mm. come in, right? Uh, help us with our exports. So if we can do things that would help increase production. So foreign investors look at that and they say to themselves, we can get good returns. We have one or two little policies we need to see them adopt. If they tweak or get one or two things correct, then we expect to see the economy, you know, really grow. Pick so yeah. positive thinking in, in that, in those lines. Yeah, I mean, the reality, you've all placed bets on Nigeria. You, you believe in this economy, you're here. Let's hope we get one or two of those big tweaks yeah, this 2024. <laughs> <laughs> and let's hope inflation, you know, comes down because that seems to be eroding, eroding a lot of value. Yes. Thank you very much, Ugo Dre, Obichuku, and Inamdi Iwizu for being my guests here today on the Nigerian economy in the global context. Well, that's all we have time for on Business Week. I'm Rola Keakik Wefilani. Let's continue the conversation on X. Do have a lovely rest of the weekend.